is hearing uh, these voices, uh, but we are here. And indeed, we have a lot to talk straight about. We have a lot of issues in our country we need to discuss. Uh, but top on the agenda, I'm sure is something on 99.9% uh, .9 of Gambians, uh, in, in Gambians' minds. And that is the state of our security. Your personal security, security of your homes, of your property, um, I think it's very key. We see the increase in crime rate, and uh, it's really a cause for concern. Uh, Mr. J, in bringing this discussion, bringing about this discussion, let's look at crime. Uh, we normally say, or it is normally believed, that leadership should be forward looking. A leadership should be able to anticipate, plan, and mitigate risk, uh, mitigate um, fight against the challenges that may come. And we see in our country, uh, and I think a lot of people have been talking about this, that with unemployment, with uh, the high rate of um, unemployment in the country, with a lot of youth out doing nothing, uh, it is only it's only a matter of time for crime to increase. And uh, our, well, the police has been doing some work, but... Thank you so much. Good evening, listeners. It's nice to be back, and we're happy to have you back um, with West Coast. See, crime is something that's a function mostly of corruption and poor planning. Corruption in the sense that when you have drugs entering your port because of bad governance structures, the final result is decadence in society. Equally, if corruption and unemployment is rife, people lose hope. When people are hopeless, that's the beginning of a lot to come. And it's sad, but we can safely say the chicken is coming home to roost. I hate saying it, but that's the fact. Why? This didn't happen overnight, but there were telltale signs that something bad is about to happen. And what's going to happen next, because we've entered the first phase. The second phase is vigilantism and mob justice, because if the citizens get to the point and they believe that the state, which is responsible primarily for the security of the people and their assets, are not capable to secure them, they will put their security into their own hands and most likely they'll start buying weapons. Mm -hmm. If they buy weapons, it will not only stop you know, crime deterrent for them. They may use it for other things other than crime deterrent. Mm -hmm. So leadership in this country, What's left of this administration is not much. And if this president is wise, he will stop all this talk about roads. He will talk all these talks about everything and worry about three things. Strengthening the institutions of state, curbing crime, and trying to give hope to the hopeless, i.e. the youth of this country. I think the president is still advised when he thinks that development is the hard side, which is the hard infrastructure, roads, etc. The soft side of development is more important. Where people walk, how people eat, where people go for their healthcare needs, and where people go for their educational needs. These are the things that the president has missed the boat on. And I'm sorry to say these political handlers and operators, honestly, they're not up to the task, or they're not gauging the temperature, sentiment, and mood of the average Gambian as of today. Okay, we've come for security sector reform for a long time, but before we touch that, let, let's look at the, uh, the criminals being inspired by leadership. People of, often say that pol the police are bothered with running after petty criminals. These ones that have uh, pick, uh, pickpockets, those that are stealing here and there, where the big criminals in ties and suits are allowed to go because if the government was doing something about corruption at state level, will that also not send a message down to the petty criminals that no, no stone will be left unturned in fighting crime? 
Absolutely. The biggest problem in this country is the indifference towards the plea, plight and cry of the Gambian as it relates to corruption in our country. Mm -hmm. And the corruption that is really stifling the country is white collar crimes. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say this is sad. Operation, whatever the police were doing a few weeks ago. Zero crime. Zero crime. We've seen them apprehending people with the knives, mm -hmm. with packed marijuana. That's all well and good. But what about the tons that are coming in the country? Yep. And we don't even have an update as for what happened. People have gone to court or someone has gone to the courts and I guess they had to let go. We talk about tons of marijuana and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Look, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If this country and government and people are serious about fighting crime, we should be very serious about fighting corruption because corruption is at the root of all the problems. But mind you, another phenomenon, most of the youths that left the shores of Gambia to Western Europe, yeah. they went through Chad, Niger and yeah. Libya. Yeah. And those places are rough, rough yeah. and crazy. Yeah. So some of them coming back home, they came with a skill set <laughs> yeah. that is a menace to society. And, 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 and some amount of fearlessness also, because well, you've seen blood, you've seen people die uh, in your presence, you've been tortured. So and, and, there is a happening on And the sad bit, mm -hmm. this government has done nothing to reintegrate them into society. All they have done is to leave them with IOM. This is to show you the irresponsibility yes. of the yeah. Gambia government. Your very own people, you're letting agencies take care of them. When the state should have stepped in and made sure no Gambian is left behind. I'm, I'm yet to see a government budget that is dedicated really to, cater, to cater for young people being reintegrated. We are, the government has outsourced this to foreign bodies, whether it's IOM, it's EU. Because the commitment is not there and it's yeah. a shame. It's a shame. You see, I always tell people, I have nothing against this president, mm. but I have everything against him in the manner in which he runs this country. Yeah. This country is a place that he needs to take seriously. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Gambia gave President Adam Obaro a whole lot. Mm -hmm. We have transformed him, his life and his immediate family to a state that he will never return to what it was prior. Depending uh, on the subsequent governments, if you call No, 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 no. no. This is not about government. No, but what I'm saying, no, no what I'm saying, no, in, in no. your current status, no, let me let me lie. In his current status, if, a, if another government comes and calls for accountability and he is found culpable of any form of corruption or whatever, he might lose everything he has. Well, but that's an opportunity he has squandered. But I am talking about the opportunity okay. we have okay. availed him. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. We have given him so much. But he didn't give us back so much. Like the Wolof who say, they are all now the mm. And this is not about partisan issue. Mm. This is about the Gambian who suffered for over 20 years yeah. and expected a U-turn from what was to what should have been. Yeah. And the dream we had of rebuilding a tattered country. Mm. You, you, um, I'll give you an example of, 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 of the seriousness of um, the, the problems we have with young people. Uh, I, the, the organization I work for, we do applications uh, for, uh, we have a slot for 100 young people to train. Sometimes the number of people that apply is about 10 times the amount that you have space for. And, and if the government is not coming in to support youth empowerment, youth employment, training and things like that, it's going to, it's, I mean, we are going to, because in the dorm, if you have dorm fatigue and the IOM, um, EU is not coming in and government is not trying to fill that gap, then we are going to have a serious problem in our hands. The problem is not dorm fatigue. The Gambian agenda must be Gambian driven. No, but, 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 uh, but we are so dependent on the donors. No, but in, as much as you are dependent on the donors, the donors are not giving you because they want you to solve their problem. I agree. They have their agendas and boxes to tick and click. I, I totally so, agree. So long as you are ticking and clicking those boxes, you will get their money. But it doesn't mean those monies are solving the problems 
the dream the Gambians are facing, especially yeah. the youth. Yeah. Therefore, the government of this country must be concerned, mm -hmm. must be resolute, and must be committed towards making the youth of this country economically viable, making the youth of this country educationally sound, and making the youth of this country healthy. But is this not also the reason why uh, people have been calling for uh, security sector reform in the hope that if we are able to re um, reform our security sector, downsize the army to an appreciable level of needed personnel and also upgrade the police. Uh, now we see criminals going into people's compounds, walking around in the street with weapons. But our police are ill-equipped to handle the, the, the criminals that are... See, I like what you have said. It's all rosy ideal. Mm -hmm. But right now, the Gambia need to take a stock take. Mm -hmm. Security sector reform, forget it. Constitution, forget it. Um, truth and reconciliation, I don't know yet. But what I know of the economic gangsters that plundered and looted our money, they have gone scot-free. Most of them. Mm -hmm. So now, what do we need? And, and more gangsters have come on. What do we need? Mm -hmm. We as a people need to be honest to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is this government fit for purpose? Mm -hmm. And the yes and no to that answer is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's not about affinity, knowing them. It's not about politics, being partisan. It's about a scorecard. Mm -hmm. The scorecard starts with did this current administration meet the expectations of the Gambia mm -hmm. coming in 2017 and what we expected? And what were those expectations? Make sure we have stronger institutions and we come in. Make sure that we have a good legal framework, i.e. constitution, to guide how the Gambian is going to live. Protect the rights of the Gambian by making sure seditious acts in the constitution and public order act and other things are out. Mm. To make sure corruption is stemmed, governance is at its top. To make sure that come election, the issue of citizenship, etc., etc., will be sorted out. Now put this on a scorecard mm. and you score the current administration, i.e., president, the citizen in chief, mm. to see whether he has made the deliverables that Gambians expected. Mm. If the answer is yes, we, we give him an opportunity. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, we the Gambians must have a reset button to reset and have, and, you know, have a sincere transition. What is a sincere transition? Mm -hmm. A transition for once and for all to put the Gambia on the right pedestal. And what is that? To make sure that the things we yearn for, cry for, and almost in 60 months this president cannot deliver for us, mm -hmm. we deliver it for ourselves collectively. And when I say collectively, not one party. That's why for me, mm -hmm. if I were a politician and I have to partake in this election, mm -hmm. I would call for a government of national unity because five years of transition has gone down the drain for nothing. Mm -hmm. And we need to have, we cannot move without a transition. Do, do, but you see, this is the um, issue that we, maybe we as a nation have to contend with. Do we have the political will from any incoming uh, political party to call for a government of national unity to work together for for the uh, betterment of the country and also to come up with a transition agenda and not a development agenda because it, it's as if once they get there they want to leave a, well, leave a mark in, in courts because for them leaving a mark is to come up with development projects so that they could be re-elected so, are we not going to see, going forward, a repeat of the battle thing? Somebody comes, promises a transition, they go one year, two years, and decide, oh, really, I, I want to be re-elected, let me come up with development projects and ditch the transition agenda. I'm happy you said that, and the last word is, I want to be re-elected. Mm -hmm. I is singular, it's right. one person. Yeah. The sovereignty of the Gambian, I think is underestimated and the Gambian still doesn't know, you know, their power oh. and might. Mm -hmm. We the people reign supreme. Yeah. And today if we say we don't want X to be here, mm -hmm. 
is going to be it, whether it's the ballot or us going out on the street. Mm -hmm. And that's what Gambians need to understand, the power we have in numbers. Mm -hmm. But our numbers are divided and we are divided yeah. from you know, irrational political lines. <laughs> we should start thinking nationally and say this is not the time to politic, but this is the time for nation yeah. building. Yeah. And in nation building, country comes first. When country comes first, mm -hmm. we have shared ideals. When we have shared ideals, we have synergy. When we have synergy, we have unity of purpose. When we have unity of purpose, Gandhi awaits. True. Uh, well, uh, listeners out there, very soon we will open the line so that you could join and uh, join us in this conversation to give us your thoughts uh, on, on, on the issues that we're discussing, issues of national security. You said something key. We are still divided on maybe mundane, little petty things. He is my tribesman, she is this, he is that. Instead of looking at the bigger picture, how can we move and come together around a particular identity? And this was one of the things that maybe it would have been good to have a new constitution in place because what we have now is a simple majority. And if the politicians believe that by simple majority they could win and maybe have their political party members in government and forget about the rest, we are, we are in for trouble because the way things are shaping uh, with about 18 political parties, two independents and counting. Uh, well, um, there is also the thought and the, 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 the thinking that not all will go for the presidency. But we are, we are very divided right now. And for us to come together, what are the things that are needed? What are the ingredients needed for Gambians to decide? Maybe, look, let's come together. Who would be a flag bearer that is going to call for national unity and not follow political agenda. We are living in 2021. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry to say, and I will apologize on air, mm -hmm. the Gambian is still a primitive human being. We are in the 19th century. Primitive in the sense that our mindset is still archaic. Mm -hmm. Our way of thinking is not progressive. And we don't have core national ideals. The Gambian is still fragmented into segments called tribes, castes, and other social nuances. What the Gambian needs is to be a Gambian. And when we become Gambians, meaning we nationalistic, when we become Gambians, we now have shared ideals, shared passion. And that's how nation building starts. We need to see ourselves collectively as an entity. You see the difference between the Senegalese and the Gambia is clearly spelled out. 1960s Senegal, Leopold Sedat Senghor, a minority savior, a minority Christian, became president of the country with a majority of people that are non-Christian, one. Yeah? Secondly, you ask anybody in Senegal, from Futa to Jurbel to Dakar to Kayor to Kaula, mm -hmm. what are you? Mm -hmm. I am a Senegalese. They will never tell you, I'm a Fula, mm -hmm. I'm a Mandinka. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You go to metropolitan Senegal, i.e. from Chess coming down to Dakar. Mm -hmm. Bulk of the people there speak Wolof and they are not even Wolofs. Mm -hmm. Tukulos etc etc but they have agreed that we need a lingua franca mm -hmm. that they have used mm -hmm. why because they have nationalistic tendencies what 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 is the reason we are almost one people we are setting up i mean it's a thin border that divides us but and we are almost surrounded by them what is it was is it leadership that gave them this sense of patriotism or is it what is it that makes the difference? Because we are almost one people. Well, the only thing we have in common mm -hmm. is language, tradition, and culture. Okay. But mindset, they are walls apart from us. But why? Why, why that mindset? Is why? it the colonial masters? Is it the no. way they were colonized? No. Is it their leadership? No. You see, leadership and started way before independence. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Alborigines, you look at the Lajor, you look at you know, Bursalo, mm -hmm. um, I forgot his name, 
I've got this um, Southern Swara. Mm. All these people fought mm. against colonialism. Seri mm. Tuba fought against colonialism. Mm. So the Senegalese, yes, in Gambia we had people who've done that, mm. but we killed our own that were aspiring to be great. And Edward Francis Small is more of a token in the history of the Gambia. It's sad. Mm. You go to Senegal. All of their schools, stadiums, hospitals are yeah, named yeah. after their late greats. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard even of a mini pitch for Billy Billy or somewhere for a PSGI or another place for a Gaba Jamba? We have tens and thousands of schools. The problem is, Nisu Dekabi Tute and Sun Holly Tute at Linden. Lee Mont Dekabi Munta them. Sun Wiki Mutsun Holly Rasko. Then we're going to have a much more definitely. Because What's up, by the way, when you would die to us? We need to start celebrating great men and women in our midst. Yeah. And we don't. And that's why we cannot build a great nation. Yeah, obviously, because I think um, the point you've raised, I mean, it makes you grow up wanting to be like one of them. What have they done? This is named after them, so I want to do for my country. But we don't have that. Um, again, this is where I say maybe it's because of leadership. Because if leadership had instituted this years ago, all of us would have grown up wanting to be like some and size. Of size also played. You know, in America, there is what you call the small town mentality. <laughs> people who live in a small town tend to, you know, gauge each other, mm. and they end up having what you call a crap in the yeah. you yeah. know, mentality. And, and that's yeah. one thing that Gambia suffers from—a pull him down syndrome. And I'll give you a classic example. I posted a criminal mm -hmm. that violated my privacy and came to my house. Mm -hmm. Help broke loose in this country. Mm -hmm. Not because of what the criminal did, but because of who posted it. Yeah, yeah. Recent days we see spate of crimes all over. People Post are posting the Ibaru ladies and other people. Mm -hmm. It's normal. Mm -hmm. So the issue is yeah. who is the messenger, not the message. And this is why this country is regressing. But before we open the lines, what can we do about the state of our of the, uh, the, the, the rate of crime, the increased rate of crime in our country. What can the police do? What can the government do? And what can we, the citizens, do? The police cannot do much until the citizen in chief mm -hmm. understands one thing: mm -hmm. that we, the Gambians, have made his life so safe and secure by giving him a house fully fortified, called the state house. So he doesn't understand crime the way me and you understand crime, right? Yeah. But he needs to feel our plight. And feeling our plight is making sure that the average Gambian community happen to have what you call night patrols. But the police cannot patrol the streets at night bare hands. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about weapons, I'm talking about logistics, cars, etc. Yeah. What needs to happen? This government needs to understand that the biggest priority a country has is safety and security. Mm -hmm. And we are paying more of a lip service to it than any other thing. Let him share of that fact in the office of the president's budget mm -hmm. and empower our paramilitary and police, not the military, paramilitary and police. Okay. What we can also do mm -hmm. as a country Take people away from the army and bring them to the paramilitary. Mm -hmm. Meaning, let's downsize, bloat, yeah. let's downsize the army and bloat mm -hmm. our civil um, policing force. Yeah. Yeah. Once we do that, we will have so many people in our streets and that will be a deterrent for crime. What needs to happen, we need leadership that is committed towards the safety, security, well-being and progression of the average citizen that lives in this country. What, what, what can we as citizens do to be able to well, protect ourselves? Uh, I've, I've read about, about people making comments, it's time to arm yourself uh, just in case uh, you are attacked. I know one time, and I've said this year before, that in Senegal, Dakar was so rough that people would have a cutlass under their car seats because somebody can stop you in the middle of the road. The and attack but because I mean self-preservation is key. The force we are not we are not we are not trying to advocate for vigilante vigilante uh, for people to be vigilantes, but you know, I mean if if I see you being attacked, God forbid, but I mean I cannot just say ah well it was yeah. 
The first rule of being a human being is called self-preservation. I love myself. And in any language you go, any culture you go, that's the first rule of being a human being. Preserve yourself. If a citizen of his going concern called the government gets to a point, he has lost hope and confidence in my primary security provider, the state. Ah, I will make sure that I sleep well at night, and for me to sleep well at night, I need to do what a man got to do. And what a man got to do is not what I have to say, but it's what I have to do. Well, and when that happens, trust me, it's not going to be nice. You know, this reminds me, um, when we were kids, uh, there, was, there was a time that there were a lot of thieves in the neighborhood, and my dad had this shotgun. Um, in the night, uh, before we go to bed, he would come out, and shoot in the air about two or three shots, you know, and then he said, you know, just in case they have ideas. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, uh, but also I think it is uh, important that we commend the sacrifice that the police are making. I think they are trying, um, but under the condition, and under right. the, 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 the police are not the problem here. You see, no, but, but but they are making some effort. But you see, when you're making an effort, mm. they say that when you are swimming, mm -hmm. going against the tide, mm -hmm. it's best to just lay down and go. Right now, mm -hmm. the police mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. are ill equipped to face the mess yeah. that is growing and growing so fast. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. The president needs to come out and speak to Gandhi and say, look, just like we did in the COVID, mm -hmm. we moved resources from one side of yeah. the budget to another side. I am going to move X amount to make sure you guys sleep well at night. Yeah. That is what good leadership does. You don't wait for more people to die. You avert what's yeah. happening. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, yeah. the president sleeps well because he lives in a fortified yeah. house provided by you and me and others. But we also want to sleep well and we are not sleeping well at night now. Well, my brother, there are, there are many things that keep people awake. <laughs> Well, uh, listeners out there, uh, those that keep following us, the time has come for you to call in and uh, give us your take on uh, the issues that are being developed, uh, that are being discussed here. Um, the number to call is 446-1193. 446-1193, I think we have the first caller coming in. Good evening, caller. Welcome to Straight Talk. <laughs> Salangari. Barbie, Barbie Namaneko. Welcome <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. Why we need to sensitize? Mm -hmm. Make I put soldiers. 
travel the left and breadth of this country. What you do? Meet me. One land land you are at. At land land you are at. Figure me as a warrior and you are halay halay. You halay them. You halay them. You must have done it. You have done it. Problem is that we are yet to go. The leaders in problem land. I'm Excel. At Kabul, mana 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 mana. We are tired of that. You really don't do that in the Gambia. Why then you will be on a time, you can't be in your way, you will be in the eye. You then take on drinking, get mommy, extended family living. If you make a different day, you have work as a problem that you have with me, as you have to work as a problem. Yes, 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 yes. Then you have to peace. What I don't know is peace. What I need is equal rights and justice. Without you. justice and equal rights, there will be no peace. Man, Lee, how did you get it? Mm. Jerejef, wanga dega. Wale gisnia fok fok tam mu amnyo jail responsibility. So policy ni wane amun enough vehicles, amun logistics, amun enough equipment pull muna man the streets, pull patrol. We don't have enough personnel. So the people that are responsible, Ministry of Interior, should be able to be very proactive in providing the support that the police needs. Well, um, we cannot keep saying that they can be uh, Amun Harris, Amun Harris. But we can waste Harris in other areas. I'm a living witness to that uh -huh. because when I caught the thief and we wanted to retrieve whatever she got, mm -hmm. I had to pay to transport them because there was no vehicle at the station. Yep. Yep. So it's sad, it's appalling, and the leadership of this country is not putting their, our monies and resources where their mouths are. Yep. We know where they're putting it, and wherever they're putting it, that's why I say, it's you know, right. when they're telling us these Banjo roads, this Nyomi Hakalang, that's not what we need. We will not use the roads if we are not safe. For the police stations that have vehicles, they will tell you that the amount that is given uh, vehicle allocation for a month is very, I mean, for a week or a month, is, I mean, is, is, is almost zero. But we when have in this country, ministers, yes, we have ministers, directors that are going with uh, how many thousands Dallas of fuel coupons. coupons. Yeah, it's so, a shame. So, so, Baba uh, but the government be, but the government be, for the government be more on a army, more on a support and protect the people, and the government is not leading by example, then we have to call them out. Yes, yeah, failure of leadership. Good evening, caller. Hello. Yes, good evening. Uh, my regards to warm regards to John and the rest of the Nanjai and the rest of the crew. Thank yeah. you. I've been following your program. Thank it's you. Very interesting. And it's helping the public and the citizenry. Thank you, sir. But I think, personally, I think one of the most uh, uh, biggest problem is that we, whatever you people and other people are talking in the radio and other public platforms, I think the authorities should take lessons from that, present it to whoever, permanent secretaries, lawmakers, and whoever to, you know, to alert the government that these, these are the uh, problems and these are the possible solutions coming from the public. Because the public knowing their problems, Surely, mm. platforms like this are giving solutions, possible solutions mm. that are given to the government and any relevant authority as a gift mm. on the plate. Yeah. Take it, and that is where you can form, uh, you can make policies. And when policies are made, these policies are made from highly qualified Gambian or possibly non Gambian professionals. But when these policies are made, are they being hijacked by? Government uh, authorities, how? Okay. Do they give them money to avert their policies, the rules and regulations that they have recommended mm -hmm. nationally yeah. for the nation for today and tomorrow? Why are those policies not being followed? I think Gambia has enough intellectuals and professionals 
to present certain policies to the government, that they should keep the, the, the government to stick to those policies, policies in all the institutions so that we can move from one level to another. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. But, but you see, you see, this is, I mean, I keep hearing whether the government is listening, whether the public servants are listening. I know that people listen. But what they will say is, ah, we'll get in a young guy and join the young guy, but they straight talk about what I am anti-government yet. And this is the thing that is sad. When people are proffering solutions, it's not that we are idle. We have other things that we could have been doing. And it's not that they don't know, it's just, I think, an outright wickedness and indifference I, I of can, our public I, servants I sometimes. People. I cannot be against a very government that I constitute. I am the government. Yeah. We the people are the government. So I cannot hate myself. Hating my government is hating myself. But I have a right to give them feedback, and the feedback loop and mechanism is something they need to support. But you see, the intolerance of the Gambian yeah. towards dissenting views yeah. is the problem. Yeah. And most people who are in the public service today, they see people like Nyanjai, one, as troublemakers, two, as hateful and spiteful people. No, we are not here to babysit them. We're here to make sure they're within the straight and narrow, because that's why we put them in office. Good. Uh, good evening, caller. Oh, you are. Yeah. Good evening, caller. Hello. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think that caller was not paying attention. We have another call coming in. Good evening, caller. Hello. Yes, yes. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome to Straight Talk. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um, good evening to you all. Good evening. By the way, let me take this with my data. Hmm. Uh. Hello. Ngan Delta Kanyuwali. Alanging program or you can allow local language. You have someone again, may along at the same thing level. You people, I mean, uh, you're doing a very good job. But I don't think it's trickling down to the masses because most of us cannot speak English. I mean, as you can imagine. So, Please, please. Okay. <laughs> Talk to the management and take it up to the Thank you so much, caller. You see, history has put us once again in trouble. Mm -hmm. I wish we have a language that we can all speak understand and communicate with. Unfortunately, our diverse peoples, mm -hmm. and that's why I love Maulana um, Julius Nyerere. Mm -hmm. Swahili mm -hmm. became a lingua franca, not yeah. only for Tanzania, but the whole of the region. Yeah. But unfortunately, if I speak Wolof, a lot of people will not understand. Mm -hmm. If John were to speak Mandinka, a lot of people will not understand, and our show will end up being lost in translation. Very unfortunate, yeah. and I feel it. Because the best way for us to communicate is through our mother tongues. Mm -hmm. And that's why we cannot have local um, languages in our schools. Because you cannot have one class teaching simultaneously using five languages. But, so, but they, I think they are now trying to introduce that. I don't know what confusion will well, you say our, is our students are struggling to speak constructive English. Now we are bringing in local I language. wish I speak. But again, again, Mr. Jai, um, we are not stopping anybody that speaks Mandinka. Yes. To also come up with their program and educate. Yes. Because let's or not. Or in or in in it's not only John Jai and Yang Jai. There are many other people in the in the, in the country. And the that, space is there. Yeah, and the space is, is. I mean, there are radio stations that don't have much program. So every Gambian get up and do something. The education must not only be left to us. We are we are doing what we can with the languages we can speak. But you know. <laughs> Anyway, I but I understand and I sympathize, yeah. and we, your point is well noted. We, we, I, I will brush up my mandinka. Hello. <laughs> yes, good evening. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Uh, my name is Abla I'm calling from Brussels. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm just congratulating you guys, because the media house you say is old. You the one telling the truth, and you are telling all what is happening in this country. So whosoever feel like you, know, you are telling something or you are politicizing, this is not what we want. Mm -hmm. You're telling the right thing, what is happening, because we all voted here for Kengis. Mm -hmm. And if the Kengis is not effective, we have every right to say it again, especially as how you tell it. Yeah. 
But what these brothers said, Nyanjai, I respect you people, Nyanjai, Nyanjai, I love you people, you are telling the truth. May God reward you of what you are doing. Amen. But the hard fact is, you said something about Senegal. Senegal is here, we have Senegal. But just recently somebody called and he said, we the Banyunian, we Banyun, we were born in battles, we love Gambia, but Banyun is like, this is what the threat is talking <laughs> And you're telling the truth, somebody is just right now telling you that, you know, mm. let's start, let's stop. We must join and we must spend the Mambulo trillion dollars. Mm. Because we all vote for Kenyans, we are yearning for it. All oh, what we voted for, we see nothing absolutely. Mm. If a government should come to somebody's house and take 16 million, I'm speaking to you, I'm your shopkeeper, I'm sitting in my shop. Mm -hmm. If somebody should come to my house and take all what that belongs to me and go away with it. The securities are nowhere to do anything. These securities are doing extremely wonderful jobs in this country. Mm. But how can they do it without a bicycle, without a rider, without a vehicle? Mm. What are they going to do? You don't give them a better salary. Yeah. So we see the party which is just constructed so, just now, less than four years ago, that's the richest party in this region. Yeah. Let's tell each other the truth. This is what is affecting this country. But we are saying people started when the UDP, the, the politicians did everything what they should do to to end dictatorship in this country. This one came to know we consulted his life as you said. Everything, his livelihood, family, everybody around him. Mm. But what is he doing for us? Nothing. Yeah, well, thank, thank, thank you so much for your program. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, do, do, I, I, I was even thinking as this uh, caller was um, speaking, do, do the police have any risk allowance and all these things, insurance? You know, because all these things are motivations for them. My friend, before you talk about risk allowance, you talk about their salary structure. It's rather unfortunate. The police and many other public institutions are fat, top down. The first layer, two layers, they enjoy the bread and the rest takes the crumbs. But it's not their problem. It's the problem of leadership at the top because the people who do the work are the totem pole, the people on the bottom. So leadership must come up with strategies to energize that base. Yeah. Leadership should come up with giving them resources. When they bought that um, vehicle with hot water to burn us, that vehicle could have bought so many patrol cars. Patrol cars yeah. So it's about priorities. Yeah. It's about what's important. But you see, they bought that for crowd control so that there won't be riots. Mm. Because riots bring instability. So they are thinking about preserving themselves rather than protecting you the, and the, me. The, the average guy. Because that car cannot go out and do patrol. Of it's course. for crowd control. Of course not. Exactly. Well, good evening, Cola. Welcome to Straight Talk. Yeah, hello. Yes, welcome. Uh, thank you. Can you tell us where you are calling from? Mm, I am around Manjai. Okay. Thank you um, for joining us. What? Lima mm. nega diwani. Hmm. Luma witness Taylor. Wow. The man who be told they will manage them. Thank you. Hmm. On the way going, I'm not being a taxi bagas. We need to sum up. Wow. I saw a paramilitary officer Munsi Gana when he asked me to talk to him. Hmm. Surprisingly, he didn't do them to the Ghana town guard post. Wow. He done them for afternoon duty. Mm -hmm. Even a vehicle to take them to where they should mount their guard oh, post. Amunko. Amunko. Seriously, he can walk with my friend. 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 I'm like, Looking at what is all true, mm -hmm. all this happening, the hard fact is government, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You want to protect yourself while you don't mind the citizenry. Mm -hmm. Police, you will be why worry you. So, then, like, your situation, the guy, you be sitting down and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know They just prefer you to have a taxi baggage. Imagine a taxi baggage. You don't know what to do. A security personnel with them on the duty. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that's a... mm -hmm. At least if work, bad motivation, mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah. But, but you see, this is the, this is the uh, paradox of leadership. You are thinking that you are protecting yourself. But the things that you fail to do have a way of getting back to you. Uh, like they say, poetic justice. You, are, you think that you are safe, but your failure to uh, protect and equip the police it's maybe one day you will need them and they don't have a vehicle to come to your house. You see, leaders don't work. They inspire a team that works. And how do they inspire a team that works? By managing their expectations. Mm -hmm. A police coming to work knows he has school fees, cash power, and feeding to take care of. Transport. And if their salary cannot give them that, they'll find means of getting it. And that's why our men in uniform are living the life they're living. It's unfortunate, but it's the fault of the government. Uh, good evening, caller. Welcome to Straight Talk. Where are you calling from? Hello, good evening. I think we lost that caller. Um, well, the number to call is 4461193. Here on West Coast Radio, the program is Straight Talk. Here every Wednesday, manned by John Charles Jai and Mr. Nyang Jai. Good evening, caller. Hello, good evening. Yes, welcome to well, Sato. Well, what don't you add, boy? Wow. Security, lack of motor day. Because motor mom, every time, government does courage and even courage. But to maintain it, what is my problem? Wow. Motor you don't have to be very tough. Because even armed force, they don't have to be armed motor. Because uh, the government department, mm. the security is there, and for the government department, they don't have to Okay. Because okay. she's very dangerous to root the nation. They don't immigrate from me. They don't pick up the plane in Johor. Mm-hmm. Why senior rankers here get them to them for you? Wow. So how many of you junior ones, senior core you see people? Why high rankers here get them to bring them to your board again? Wow. Okay. So Lord, why man? I don't think government have a uh, I'm I'm not a problem. When they when they man man like that, you only want the well government um, security. You bring it on the Ministry of Interior. Um, wow. When it comes to police, at you paramilitary making it in wow. immigration. So wow. if if at all you get jail, but you just go send high um, command, can more wow. wanna regulate law? You go to you neka on the ground. It's government. So wow. let's 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 talk straight. What be from from where you live? Secondly, you get the security amen moto police station neka. You have moto for neka pull patrol. So why are they better on motor more for neka? No loot either. Take two, three crimes when you amch jurisdiction. You have to be on motor. You run all those. So they want to hold me the way it is. Maintenance, I know, is a problem. But we need to. Wow, go with them together. But do you know what them? You have motor with them. You have logistics with them. Bokanas. At the lack of motivation for the men on the ground, the men and women on the ground. I'm siding with the police. Mm -hmm. that this government for the longest, and not this government, but governments Government, in yeah. Gambia, yeah. whether it was Jawara, Jame, and Baro, mm -hmm. we have neglected yeah. our security and we have paid lip service to security. Mm -hmm. Why have we paid lip service to security? It was a small country and crime was manageable. Yeah. We have gotten to a point where it's dog eat dog and something <laughs> must give in. Yeah. Let's take this last call. Good evening, caller. Welcome to Straight Talk. Good evening. Yes. Uh, I think the problem is not being tackled, even from your point of view. Mm. Sorry. Okay, we lost that. I, I don't know what we, we have the time. Okay, let's take this last. Okay. I, yeah, we have a call. We'll take this call. Please be on uh, on the on the point, and then we uh, we will wrap up. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, bro. Yes, welcome to Straight Talk. Yes, sir. Long last year. Delona Lokomboka. Wow, Poro Rossi, Pasa Kinjako Naduga. The Amnu Wahe Amnen in Kukise. But senior to reality, did they think system be Sidigan 2016 Aglegi? Momboko na senior support system be Chay Republic Bifinekon, President Bifinekon. Why they would talk at a by Wahani? They would have been a whole nebula hill and your toga. This Bulanko Yana Jahe, when you see Koyaka Koken to Koleka. It's not telling you of them the Buyaga, but for Senegal, you know, dear Maga. Senegal, Gambia, you don't compare, neither open in your bar, neither open in your doyware. No, you don't even want to compare. Then you since 2016, but they in Senegal, they 
Thank you for those of you that have called. Let's um, round up now. Mr. Jai, yeah. um, can you just give us um, your, your last take? Jere Jeff, I think um, it was a great show and it's good to be back. Mange nya gambe ni nyudem pengu ji mantai la jel sume nyare li pengu COVID. And swing kodefe, I think dine nyi muna timbale dekabi. Why am na lene ni chi COVID bi? Luma ron setlo. Dama dem mat gis ne pengu bi. Bena pengu buneka mugi jar four dollars. Globally, in the global market, Dolu mm. Lajar, mm. Gambia and Yal one better than the Icovax, general new pingu. When one pingu, one shot is four dollars, two hundred dollars. Gurgi, Gurgi, Yal one, the farm for more empty, and the boat, I mean, dignity, the farm loy jumbal saboba. Eight dollars per Gambian head, Gurgi Naglole Nasanasa, one game common and definitely buy Nyan Nyan and to be a Yal one. All right. Uh, next week we'll be uh, talking more about that. But thank you very much, uh, listeners, for being out there. Thank you very much, Gambia, for uh, for all of you that keep calling and uh, keep commending the program. Let's keep talking straight. This is our country. We have no other place to go. Let's keep uh, truth to power. Hold our government accountable. Hold our public servants accountable. Support the police and stay safe. Keep safe. Uh, if you can have guards, dogs. Uh, and maybe yes. uh, something to protect yourself. Uh, it's all well and good, but let's not get into vigilante justice. This is the country we have. For the love of country, let's keep loving and hoping for the best for our nation. Until we come your way next week, this is from the Straight Talk team. God bless you and God bless the Gambia. Oh.